Welcome to part one of video number five, Game Logic, where we're going to be discussing some of the game logic we use in our app. So the main gameplay will all take place inside the virtual lab, and we've built all of these models from scratch in Blender and created a lot of graphic assets to go inside of this lab using photographs and assets that we've created and put together uh, just in a graphics editing package. And we also have some audio clips uh, that Matt has created and some video clips uh, that Matt has created as well that will go into uh, our virtual lab. The whole gameplay experience is going to take place inside the virtual lab. So what you're going to see as we go through the game logic is how we update some elements inside the virtual lab just to relate to what the player is currently doing as they explore the lab. Uh, the main gameplay is all exploration and discovery based. So we're not trying to direct the player to do anything specific. We just want them to walk around the lab and explore the stations and learn how the different geology and resources of Ontario uh, interact, where they're located, and a little bit about each one. And now uh, Nineveh and Kira are going to walk us through how they connected the various lab elements together. For this video, we're going to be setting up a few game objects, a resource box, microscope knob and the screen, and a clipboard. And we'll show you through the code at the end how the code interacts with these game objects to create the functionalities that we want inside the app. So the microscope has a screen that will change images as we select through the layers. And the knob that we have is actually turnable, so when you turn the knob, you will be able to zoom in on the image that appears on the microscope screen. On the resource box, you will be able to laser onto it and change the resource on which the game states are based off of. So we have four game states based on the different natural resources. And for the clipboard it is also going to be based on the layer. So the clipboard page and its contents will change based on which layer is selected inside the lab. First of all, we're going to create our resource box. So for our resource box, we are just going to import a prefab that was made. So this is just a simple 3D cube with a red material on it. So I'm just gonna import that into our scene it's by dragging it in from the assets folder. And we can see it appears. In the prefab, there is the gas cube game object. And for the game object, we're going to adjust a few things. So we're going to rename it to gas resource. That's what I look for inside the code that we will explain later. And we're going to set the layer that the prefab exists on to grabbables, since everything that can be lasered on is under the grabbables layer, and everything else cannot have the laser target it. We're also going to add a box collider so that the laser has something to hit on the game object. So that's just something that comes pre-installed with Unity, just adding a box collider component. I'm also going to tag the game object in the prefab as gas. I'm also accessing this tag inside the code that you'll see later on. It's gonna, I'm just going to make the whole prefab static. That's just to save on some computational power. And this tells the game settings that this object is not going to move. I notice we have a lot of tags set up now. Right, so those seem to be like an important way of organizing things in Unity. Yeah, so basically tags are used to uniquely identify a game object from the code. So if there's a function where you can find a game object according to its specific tag. And good practice in Unity is to never name any two objects with the same tag. So a tag's kind of like a unique identifier for a game object. All right, so lastly, I'm going to add the audio source. So for us, we added a little sound that plays when you click on the resource box. So it's just a little gas sound that Matt provided for us. So I was gonna put in the audio clip that is in my assets folder. And the output mixer is something that's already provided by the Oculus package, so that should be there. You're gonna unclick play on awake since we're gonna want to play the sound only when you click on the box. And I just turn up the spatial blend a little bit to make the sound a little more 3D to make it sound like it's in a certain space in the room. 
Now that we have the resource box, we're going to put in the microscope game object. So this is just a prefab, a 3D model of a microscope that Jordan made for us. So I'm just going to set it up in the lab. So there's the microscope and the game object inside the prefab. For the screen, we are going to use a canvas component. Remove the graphics raycaster since we don't need that inside VR. And you're going to add an image game object to the canvas. So this is going to act as the image that we're going to show on the screen. So for the render mode of the canvas, you're going to set it to world space. And I'm just going to reposition this canvas to fit onto the screen with the correct height and width. So you can just play around with it until you get it to lay on the screen of the microscope model. We're only doing the microscope one That's using right. uh, an element out of Unity because we discovered that if the image that we're putting onto something as a texture needs to move, we couldn't just use one of the built-in material slots in the model. Uh, whereas if it doesn't need to move, then we can just use a built-in material slot in the model uh, as we did for some of the other uh, prefab objects. Is that correct? Yes, since we want our image to zoom in. So if you just wanted to display an image on anything, it would probably be better to apply a material to the screen and set the texture there. I'm just trying to fit it to the microscope as best I can. So once you have the screen fitted to the microscope, which you can see I've done here. Uh, we're going to bring in the uh, microscope knob. So this is just another model that was made in Blender for us. So I'm just gonna bring it in and I'm gonna position it to its correct position for the microscope. So this has to be a separate game object as we want it to move when the player grabs onto it. So it can't be connected directly to the uh, microscope model. All right, so going to the game object inside the prefab, uh, we are going to add a box collider. So this is going to let the hands know that you can grab onto something. We are then going to add the rigid body, and we're going to set it to is kinematic since this is an object that moves. We're then going to attach our microscope script, which we will discuss later and OVR grabbable since all grabbable objects need this script to be recognized by the Oculus custom hands prefab. And remember to set the grab point to the collider that you just attached to the knob. All right, so once everything's together, I just drag everything in under the microscope prefab just to compile all of the objects together. So now they're all under the same package. All right. So I'm just renaming the canvas to microscope screen and the image object to microscope image as that's what I'm calling on inside the code. So you'll see that going on a little later. And for the image, you can see that we have a source image field so that is where we are going to set our images for the microscope. So I'm going to show you how we brought in a sprite sheet, which is just a bunch of images uh, set onto one image file, and how I manipulated it in Unity to divide it into multiple sprites. So I'm going to re-import that image just to show you guys what kind of settings I use to split up all the images. So once we've imported our sprite sheet in, we are going to click on it and in the inspector window, you can see the texture type, the very top field. So we want to set that to Sprite 2D and UI. And for the Sprite mode, we don't have a single Sprite. We, have, we want to create multiple Sprites since there are multiple images. So we're going to click multiple. Some people say to use trilinear filter mode for VR specifically. So I set the filter mode to trilinear. And then you're going to press apply. All right, so now we have created uh, one single sprite, but we want to split it into multiple sprites. So we're going to go into the sprite editor, which is the button under uh, the inspector window that you see right there. 
So if you go under slice uh, and for type, you click grid by cell size, you can input the pixel size of each sprite that you want. So we know the resolution of each of our images. So I'm going to input that into X and Y. And then if you click slice, you'll see that we have created 29 or 30 different images. You can see right there, they're all split up now. And you can rename them if you'd like. So to apply those changes, we're going to click apply. All right, so now you can see that we have all of our sprites separated and we can access them all separately inside the code. So for the microscope screen, I'm just gonna set it on default to be the first image from my sprites sprite sheet. So you can see, set it right there. There we go. All right, so now that we've finished the microscope, we can go ahead and set up our last object, which is the clipboard. So here's our clipboard object with three materials. I'm going to import that into the scene again. There it is. So for the clipboard, pretty simple. We have, if you go into the mesh renderer component, we're going to change element one, which is the paper material, to my own custom material that I created called clipboard mat. And I'll explain how we set that up. It's pretty simple. So clipboard mat is just a standard material that I made in Unity. So when you just click create material, it's going to come up. And I just set the texture to the clipboard images that I brought in that were created for us by Jordan. So all the images come in as a default texture. You don't need to change any settings, just import the images straight in. You can see right there, that's the page that I set the material to as default. Yeah, so if I want to change the page, which I'll be doing in the code, we're just going to have to change the texture. And you can see on the page right there that the content has changed. All right, so for the clipboard, we're also going to add a box collider so that it can interact with our hand when we pick it up. We're also going to add a rigid body since we want gravity to act on the clipboards so when we drop it onto the table, it just plops down, doesn't just float in midair. And we're going to add our OVR grabbable script since it is an object that we want to be grabbed by the hands. And remember to set the grab point as the box collider that you attached onto the clipboard. And lastly, we're going to rename the game object inside the prefab to clipboard. And that's just how I'm going to call on it in the code that you're going to see later on. Thank you for watching part one of video number five. Stay tuned for part two.